isn't the rapture a prelude to total destruction? So how long are they going to be able to take care of your pets or your house or whatever? You know, like, I guess well, clearly it's all a fairy tale anyway. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> definitely. These end times things like people scale it up and they think, well, OK, you know, if, if a human being eventually decays and dies, maybe the whole planet will do the same. That, that's the only thing you can't avoid is entropy, like the inevitable oh. <laughs> end of this system. And yeah, I was, I was going to say that'll drive you neurotic because you oh. cannot fight. Entropy. No, no. <laughs> Get the, ex the exact number, but within the Bible, there were predictions of the end of the world that came and went throughout the span of the Bible. Let me uh, get the whatever it is out of my eye that is in my eye. Wait, you have something in your eye. Do a cold one. It's time for yet another kitchen sink microscopy. I'm Eric Rosenblatt, and uh, hey, we would definitely love it if you'd like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. Or you know, if you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. I guess you know we we could take it. Boom, 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 boom. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, Casey Rochefort, and uh, you know, there's um, there's this thing called uh, music. And uh, music is something that we happen to create. And said music can be found at the end of the episode. Different song every time. Well, 99.9% .9 of the time. But you've got to find the one time we made a mistake by watching <laughs> all the episodes. <laughs> so hang out to the end. Hear the song. Pick it up on iTunes or listen on Spotify or you know, throw us a few bucks and uh, get those songs right away at patreon.com slash ksmbitcast. So, what shall we uh, confabulate about today? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm thinking that... Well, do you hear that? What's, that? what's that sound? It's kind of like a whooshing, rumbling sound. Everybody, look what's going down. No, no, this is big. Like, oh man. Oh, jeez. Oh, ah! Only joking. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I want to talk about the end of days. You know, hmm. the end times, like apocalypse and zombies killing everything and the planet exploding and the sun exploding and whatever. It's the end of the world <laughs> as we know it. Okay, you know, can I just can I just put that on the playlist for the apocalypse? <laughs> like we should have that ready to go. Like that, you know, you know they have that emergency broadcast system like in the event of some kind of emergency that it goes to everybody's phones, every TV plays it. You know, if they know shit's getting real like oh, well, this is it. They should just like play this particular playlist with all these perfect end of the world songs. I would love that. <laughs> if Trump does run again, that should be his campaign song. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, a very self aware thing to do, you know? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, the, at the end of the world, there's. There's a few different angles to that. There's the, the whole religious prophecy thing. And then there's, you know, an actual physical end to life on Earth, let's say. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't think the planet's going to explode, although it's not impossible, I guess. You have something big enough. In fact, that might be how the moon is formed. There's actually kind of a lot of evidence to suggest something 
very big hit the earth and that's how the moon was formed that might even be the origin of our metallic core like a giant piece of iron just was like boom, right into the earth huh. and obviously a long long time ago which the the explanation as to how the the orientation the orbit of the moon how one side is always facing the earth can be explained by such an event so hmm. it's possible and if it happened millions of years ago well it could happen again there's a lot of stuff flying around out there and we can't see it all i mean we're getting there but we definitely can't see it all so yeah i mean i i guess we should start with like uh, talking about the kind of religious kind of thing and and then maybe go into the more like scientific angle um you know, because yeah. like, here's the thing th this is the, the thing that the, the, as far as the religious or the spiritual side of things goes, the thing that makes me question any of those things is that every generation has had their end of days predictions, you know, the, the end is near, uh oh, you know, and, and but mm -hmm. it's never come to pass. They even sometimes people even give specific dates, like <laughs> on this exact day, this is going to happen. And it doesn't. And then, of course, you know, they're like, well, it's like the invisible dragon or whatever, you know, like, oh, well, well, it's because of this. Oh, oh because we prayed or because of something, yeah. some, some explanation to explain why that prediction didn't come to pass. I think the most recent one that was like really had any steam to it was the end of the Mayan calendar, December 21st, 2012. Oh, yeah. And that guy, yeah. Harold Camping, was, you know, kind of the ringleader of preaching about the end and like i think there were uh businesses popping up that are like we'll take care of your pet after the rapture after the rapture with a non-refundable deposit right now you know <laughs> <laughs> but then wait a second hold on who's gonna take care of the pet if everything's gone well the atheists won't be raptured Oh, I Harold see. Camping's thing was, when, you know, he Christianized the Mayan calendar and said to say it was going to be a rapture. Okay. All right. But then wait a second. Isn't the rapture a prelude to total destruction? So how long are they going to be able to take care of your pets or your house or whatever? You know, like, I guess. Well, clearly it's all a fairy tale anyway. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, definitely. But there are a lot of people that really really buy into this. I mean, you know, it, as far as religions go, I, I mean, I was raised Christian, so I know all about the revelation stuff um, where, you know, I think a large proportion of Western populations derive their kind of end of days uh, ideology or, or thoughts, I guess, from that. I think it all kinds of kind of stems from that. It's not uh, that dissimilar to Ragnarok or. Mm hmm things like that well we know I, maybe, maybe, maybe we shouldn't necessarily go into too much detail but the christian religion is preceded by many other religions zoroastrianism right. and stuff like that 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 are actually the origin of christianity um yeah but let's let's yeah. just leave that one alone i i don't want to piss anybody off or yeah. I mean, there was even like a whole movie series or something. Maybe it was like a made for TV movie series. I don't know. It's called Left Behind. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, I think I've seen some of that and it's it's not bad. Like it, if you treat it like a fantasy mm -hmm. kind of thing, I mean, it's an interesting thing, um, you know, because you could replace God with aliens or something and, and you know, the same kind of things could play out um so i guess there's plausibility there um you know you can suspend disbelief a little bit yeah i i wonder like what's the point of that i don't know particular genre of folklore let's say <laughs> yeah i maybe i mean from a religious standpoint it might be this whole kind of repent sort of thing i mean i remember back in the 80s people walking around with signs it says repent the end is near you know so it's sort of the the you know when you go to 
you, you click on an ad on Facebook to buy something and there's this kind of timer saying like the sale ends in 25 minutes. You better yeah. buy it now. It, uh, the, 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 the worst is when you are watching an ad on TV that you've seen a hundred times before. That's like call within the next five minutes. Yep. And you know, you'll, you'll get two for the price of one or you get 50% off or something. Like, I think it's that kind of uh, the, the uh, time limit kind of thing that, that was maybe a real might drive that. tactic, you know? <laughs> yeah, it really is because people, people know that, uh, I, you know, a lot of these things. And I think maybe some of the origins of the end times might come from our understanding of the fact that we're finite, right? Like entropy that mm-hmm. of all the things that terrify me in this world, it's entropy. Like I have nightmares of shit falling apart, like degradation and decay and structural failure of of things like houses and myself and whatnot you know that that's the only thing you can't avoid is entropy like the inevitable oh. <laughs> end of this system and yeah i was and, i was gonna say that'll drive you neurotic because you oh, cannot fight entropy. <laughs> no no exactly and and so i think that might potentially be kind of the genesis of of these end times things like people scale it up and they think well okay you know if if a human being eventually decays and dies maybe the whole planet will do the same maybe there's some kind of even bigger version of that um which does make sense actually from from a cosmic cosmological standpoint because you know there's a lot of similarities between the atomic and the uh, macro scale things that they kind of mimic each other in a lot of ways. Um, and there's reasons for that, but I, I don't want to get into yeah. that, but, but I mean, you know, I think people s- pick up on that and assume that things are going to work the same way. And to some extent they do. I mean, there's things like black holes, there's collisions between planets in space that, would I mean if there was life there, it would result in total destruction. Like imagine if Venus one day was just like and like hit planet Earth. Oh yeah, <laughs> Venus and Earth would both be rubble. Like that's well, the end of it, and that yeah, stuff I, happens all the time. So I mean, that, like to go back to the you know the reason for having such stories. I, I guess I can see that like rationale is as far as like a herd control sort of thing but what i don't understand is that like picking a date seems ridiculous especially especially after it's been uh, time after time shown to be just a joke like it does I, seem i, I forget a- the, the exact number but within the bible there were predictions of the end of the world that came and went throughout the span of the Bible, like five yeah. times or something. <laughs> no. And, and some would say a lot of the stuff in the Bible is allegorical. So it may not necessarily mean what is directly stated. Yeah. But, yeah. but it's yeah. like, that gets into cherry picking and stuff. Like, oh, what do we think is real? And what do we think is just, you know, <laughs> but, but it is, it is a story told by a multitude of people. So, mm-hmm. you know, that, might make sense but i mean to, yeah, to, picking a to date go though, further with the point though like why would god put an end date on it and tell everyone like yeah. how is that if everyone knew when the end was don't you think things would be a lot different well because yeah you'd you'd be you know you just live it up for your yeah. entire life Knowing no progress that, whatsoever. Well, you know, yeah, just... <laughs> you'd be like, oh, well, this is the time. It's kind of like if you knew when you were going to die or even better. Uh, it, it's like if the cops, you, you know, they're, they're going to do some kind of raid on your house because of some kind of illegal activity or something. And they let you know like a week in advance and they call you up and they're like, hey, by the way, um, a week from now, we're going to show up and raid your house. So, yeah, <laughs> you better be ready. Well, it's like, well, okay, you're going to destroy the evidence and, and clear out of there, you know? Like, so why would you do that? There, it doesn't make any sense. And 
and even the Bible is contradictory because it, it, it didn't say something. I mean, it's been a while since I've read the Bible, but it, it was like something about the end coming like a thief in the night. Like the idea is that you don't know when it's going to happen, but then, oh, by the way, it's going to happen at this time. Even though the Bible doesn't specify times, although people have extrapolated times, which I think is kind of sketchy. Uh, like, mm, that's a little bit like the Bible code. Um, you know, you can interpret things whatever way you want to, really. Well, I mean, that's how people use the Bible, right? It's it's their magic eight ball. Yeah. They, you know, it's only got so many words in it, and a lot of it's just stories. And yeah. they think it has every answer to every problem ever. And all right. So it, if that's the case, then why tell me why uh, Microsoft RMS is giving me an open uh, access is denied error uh, on my, my register computers in one particular location. God you know, works in mysterious. Ways. Riddle me that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think some of the lessons are are all right. Like, there's definitely some human kind of like, hey, how to get along kind of, especially in the New Testament. The Old Testament's kind of hateful. Um, but the, the, the New Testament is a little bit of hippie bongo drumming, like, you know. Whoa, oh, city of bloodshed, <laughs> pot in which there is filth. Whose filth has not gone out of it? Exactly. <laughs> well, in, empty it cut by cut. <laughs> we we may have to have that song at the end of this episode. It, yeah. It's not actually finished, but we might have to have it because yeah, that was that was good. But as far as like putting an end date, it does seem very risky if you're uh, you know somebody at upper echelons of religion, or if you're writing a religious text. To put a specific date on things is very risky because the second that date comes to pass, well, that's it. Like the game's up, you know. Yeah. So, but I, they all backpedal, you know. They they all recognize that and they have to do damage control. Well, that, that's what I was saying. Like, yeah, it, yeah. Oh, well, it's because of this or because of that, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, the the new date is this date now you know yeah. <laughs> like i just i just want to like i want to be there in person when one of those end of times people is like trying to backtrack on why the the predicted time didn't come true or whatever and, and if they're like god changed his mind i'm gonna be like hey um hey, why would god change his mind if god has a plan you know, like, <laughs> what does God need with a starship? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, quoting Star Trek Five is is risky in and of itself. Is it Trekkie? <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, you know the the people that that buy into that. You can't really like reason with them because well, no, because I don't I don't think it's it's bigger than just apocalyptic predictions. There's, there's more to it. And, you know, it kind of goes into like someone's identity, which religion and politics uh, kind of infects um, where, where people, instead of just being who they are, you know, they're themselves, they derive their sense of self from some external force, right? Their, their religion. Oh, I'm part of this, this group. I'm a, a whatever, you know, a heaven's gate person, I guess. Um, and, and, and that gives them a sense of self groundedness or something. And it's very, very hard because they, they don't want to challenge it. They, because it, why would you challenge yourself? You know, why, why would you question yourself? Well, I mean, you should, but that's a healthy thing to do. But, yeah. but you know, for a lot of people, that's not how they're they operate. That's not how they were raised. No. Um, and and so trying to reason with somebody in that kind of mind state is absolutely impossible. You can't. It, well, and and people yeah, like what you said about people not really evaluating themselves. 
people that are religious, but recognize that those people are kind of crackpots, you know, they just say, they just dismiss them. They say they're not real Christians or whatever. And it's <laughs> like, well, you're just not recognizing that they're just a spicier flavor of crazy than you, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, and I, I, I don't want to, you know, just <clears throat> dump on, on religion entirely because I think there's some good aspects of it, which maybe we'll have to talk about at some point, but you know, everything in moderation, well, there, yeah, there's that's, nothing that's wrong. The thing. Yeah. Like religion can be a force for good, but put into the wrong hands um, because of the fact that people feel so strongly about their chosen religion, it's very easy to be manipulated. And that therein lies the real problem with yeah. religion is that it, it's so overwhelmingly powerful that when you get somebody uh, like a evildoer, someone who wants to, uh, they want to do their own thing, selfish reasons, whatever they have total control. Yeah. A priest, a rabbi, you know, a cult leader, whatever. They they come in and they are basically the emissary of God to these so, people. So for me, the reason I, I tend to look down upon religion, despite it having some good qualities, is that objectively speaking, if you put those qualities on a scale, everything that's just objective, a part of what makes religion is how its constituents use it yeah um, and it, it's basically you you could take that outside of religion and say a cult of personality like you know like the the charisma that hitler had over people mm -hmm. you know like they weren't the ones actually doing it but they weren't stopping it they were supportive of it you know like they went with the crowd and yeah. contributed to that ideology objectively being a bad thing if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And and it, it's a very irresistible like the, pull, I guess. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah, the like, things that are good from religion don't have to come from religion. True. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. It, 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 it selfless motivations and, and, and helping people, you know, giving of yourself for others. Like those, those are good things. Um, but it can be twisted very easily to do very, very bad things. And um, it because very people, often is. Yeah. Well, it, well, and it's because it's a tantalizing uh, target for yeah. uh, people who would want to manipulate people to do their bidding, to get what they want, right? Uh, case in point, last season, we interviewed uh, that guy, Sam, about his book, A Sinful Mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I, I encourage people to to watch with the caveat that it's, it's very difficult to watch and it's a triggering topic about um, abduction and abuse and stuff. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, th that was very religiously tinged, um, you know, like motives. Yeah. You know, however twisted and, you know, objectively wrong it is for normal people to recognize you know like that that was a component of it yeah and and here's the thing i i don't want to come across as being uh arrogant or anything like that um because i think everybody is susceptible to being drawn in by those forces oh yeah it like the angles are many and and it can happen to anybody. We, we should be sympathetic uh, for people who have gone through that and gone drawn into that. I mean, especially for kids, right? You don't I, know I bought into all the dare bullshit. Yeah. You know, I, it took a long time to deprogram myself from that. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's still working on it. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of the same sort of thing. Like, it's kind of a religiosity sort of feel there. Uh -huh. Um. And, and that's harmful. Um, but we're, we're supposed to be talking about uh, the end times. <laughs> I mean, this kind of does lead into like why people, why, well, I mean, I brought up Heaven's Gate earlier. Um, yeah. By the way, 
that website is still around. Their, their <laughs> website is still active. They have people they left behind to maintain the website so the <laughs> message could be carried on. Nice. Um, it, I mean, that's a baller move, I got to say. Um, but, you know, yeah, if you don't know what Heaven's Gate is, look it up. Maybe check out the website. You know, I, there, there's no cult leaders anymore. It's just a website <laughs> now, so you don't have to worry too much. Um, but it's fascinating. A whole bunch of people committed mass suicide because they thought that there was some kind of like end times event coming this astral collision happening and it was going to end everything. And I, I don't know why you can't just face it. Um, why you have to kill yourself before it, but right. Uh, maybe I get it. You know, like soldiers when they're captured. Okay. You know, rather than being tortured, you might want to end it now. Well, or, or on Gate your own to do with aliens too yeah oh yeah oh so yeah I, th- I think it was like they were supposed to release themselves to the to the alien spacecraft that was going to rescue them or something yep. yeah that was the idea um so they would like float away their <laughs> spirit into this spacecraft and go somewhere else and a lot of moving parts to there, the people there of, is and they and, did it <laughs> like they they all did Basically, yeah. most of them um, willingly, their kids, uh, families, like everybody drank the poison and, and died. And, you know, assuming that this was going to happen. And I mean, it's tragic. Totally the whole tragic. saying from that, like drink the Kool-Aid or whatever. Right? Yeah, that's well, I think that actually goes back to Jonestown. If oh, I that was recall. Jonestown. OK, but it's, Heaven's they, Gate there's a lot the, of them that have you drink poison though yeah yes <laughs> yeah and and that that's kind of a red flag if somebody's like hey you know you gotta drink this stuff everybody's got to drink this stuff and it does kind of make me think like about the whole communion thing like <laughs> right huh what if um but hey, man what if the catholic church is putting a microchip in in the in the body of christ <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you just like hewed the entire <laughs> Catholic Church now with that thought. <laughs> oh. I and mean, it's, you know, and it's true. Do your own research. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, but people should look things up and, and research stuff. I mean, that's really important. Um, you know, like things like Heaven's Gate, though, it there's so many red flags. Um, and it, it, it happens incrementally to, I don't want to use the boiling frogs analogy, but it kind of is like that where there's a little step this way, a little step that way. And pretty soon you're drinking a bunch of poison and you're feeding it to your kid and you're all like hundreds of people are dying. Like, there, there should be critical thinking skills, man. That's the thing. Like, there's a point where you should be able to recognize, wait a minute, something isn't right here, and get the fuck out. I, I remember uh, my, my friend and I went to a seminar. I don't know. It was some random thing back in the 90s. He's like, oh, there's this place you can make like a whole bunch of money. Let's go. And listen to this speech and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the company. I'll remember it later. It's probably, it doesn't matter. Um, But we went to this place at some corporate uh, park, right? You know, office buildings and stuff. And we went up there and there's a whole bunch of people and everybody's really friendly and stuff. And we sit down and everybody's got like this the spray that they're like spraying into their mouths constantly. And we're like, what? what's with that spray? And they were like handing out canisters, like a little binaca tube almost, but it was their own thing. Um, And everybody's like spraying it constantly. And, and the, the, the speaker got up and started talking and it was very cult. Like Um, it, it, it was kind of like some kind of 
pyramid scheme, sort of multi-level marketing kind of thing, but it felt very cult like. And I it, like my feelers went up. I was like, ooh, this is this is something. Something's weird, you know. And me and my friend were kind of looking at each other, like, um, and they, eventually they were like, ah, oh, break time, cookies, and you can get some more of this spray and stuff. And and we were like, hey, let's uh, let's go to the bathroom. And we were like, hey, everybody, we gotta go to the bathroom. And we were like, they were like, okay. <laughs> we <laughs> as soon as the doors shut behind us, we were like, let's let's go. And we ran and hopped in his car. And we're like. Arr! like peeled out of there <laughs> oh man yeah that's yeah. a good point like multi-level marketing stuff like that those pyramid schemes those are kind of like low-level cults yeah well really. they, they kind of play to the same emotional uh the same mindset i guess chain uh, letters all that yeah stuff. yeah exactly it, 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 like <clears throat> i mean and it only takes i, I like i say i I'm kind of an idiot, but I was able to recognize that something wasn't right. And, and, you know, and when your spidey sense tells you, you get this kind of feeling like, Ooh, this is weird. You know, Oh, this strange man is touching people in a weird way or doing something funny, or they're saying some strange things yet. You should leave while you still can leave. Now it's easy to leave early on. Don't ignore that stuff. Like, yeah, those things like I, I, I don't want to get all woo, but like those kinds of senses do like we can pick up on stuff that we, you know, subconsciously that we don't consciously understand. And yeah, you, you could tell when things are off. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's like, you know, 99.4% of people won't like share and subscribe to this channel, but if you would, then you would be in that small percentage of people who do. Actually, if you like, share, and subscribe within the next five minutes, you'll have perfect luck for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is and exactly if you don't, what they do. If you, if you don't, one of your family members is going to die tomorrow. Yeah. People that, fall for that shit to this day. They do. They do. It tends and to be the older generations, I've noticed. Yeah. I don't know why that is, but. You know, there's probably some kind of cultural thing there. But, you know, things kind of like, they're cyclical, so I'm sure that that sort of effect is, it's a human thing. It's going to come back again. Mm -hmm. um, there's only so long societies can stay enlightened, I guess. <laughs> Um, and that's I guess it just appeals thing. to superstition, you know. Like, yeah, but and a lot of people are superstitious. Like, huh. it's but I don't know. Like, what about the science though? Like, could there really be, a, you know, a, a foreseeable end to everybody, like everything, all life? Yes. <laughs> yes, they're absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, where do I start? I mean, you know, you I'm sure some people remember or have seen the movie Armageddon, right? With mm -hmm. the big old meteor asteroid thingamabobs flying around and for some some dumb reason they sent up. I mean, it's a movie, right? It's Hollywood. They don't know anything. <laughs> Um, they set up like miners or something with nukes and tried to blow it up. And of course didn't work. At least they got that right. But that's not the way to do it. <clears throat> um, yeah. The whole giant flaming meteorite thing that, that is not that unlikely. That's actually like a real concern. We really should be preparing for um, the average person. You like, I'm a prepper, but like, there's no way I could prep for like the earth being impacted by um, a, a meteorite the size of Texas. Like, okay. I might as well just, uh, just uh, enjoy the ride, I guess. 
because uh, that's it. Um, but there are ways. The <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't go into that like crappy ass Aerosmith song. I'm sorry to the people who like it. That oh, it's technically a cover, but yeah. I know, but they performed it. Uh, and it was played on the radio. Yeah, man. Uh. Although I enjoy Armageddon, I think it's it's a fun movie. Impractical, but fun. Um, but you know, that is definitely something we should be concerned about. That is an extinction level uh event. Mm-hmm. If something big, really, really big hit planet Earth, like life as we know it, life on Earth wouldn't end, but our lives would more than likely. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, all life could end, uh, even with climate change. It's like people, people don't seem to like think it through a few steps to realize, like, you know, one species going extinct can have a massive impact on everything. That yeah, the dependent effect, you know? dependency and stuff. Yeah, it, like everything's kind of interconnected in some way or yeah. another, and you know, it's so funny that like people are less worried about the actual threats to our future than these like mystical ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that, that that's kind of like why I wanted to kind of talk about the, the spiritual side of things and then the like factual scientifically grounded kinds of things. Um, because yeah, something like a, an impact from space, even something really small, relatively small, is the size of a bus or something like that, could alter planet Earth for millennia. Like it, it's definitely something to be concerned about, and it, it is not like a question of if; it's a question of when. Like, it how would we de- stop that though <laughs> with our technology? Well, we could, we could, detection is the key. Um, we could very easily stop it. Uh, we have the ability to launch fairly quickly. If you have uh, some kind of spacecraft that has propulsion on it, it can, all you have to do is alter the trajectory just a little bit in advance. Obviously, if you're looking up in the sky and you see it, it's probably too late. Yeah. Um, but you know, if we detect it way, way far away, yeah, we, we have a chance to, to alter its course. So it'll avoid earth. And, and that's something I could get behind. Like, this is something we should be investing a lot of resources into. God um, damn, that is probably the most important, like, uh, I don't know, like the right word for it, but it's probably the most important thing that we get from the field of astronomy really yeah oh is, yeah is that sentinel protection sort of thing like it, exactly and and let's not forget like the average person there the this astronomy is comprised of professionals but also amateurs and amateurs have found some some crazy stuff out there because you know they're dedicated to looking up in the night sky and they see things and they see things that professionals don't see. So it's like, it's a team effort here. That because, reminds me. Um, did you hear that Tim Russ, the guy that played Tuvok on Star Trek Voyager, like helped discover an asteroid or something? Like, what? Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. Like, like, I think that was, it was just like, just like you were just saying, like a case of amateur astronomy or something. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah. hey, uh, captain there is a uh, you know <laughs> however he told them you know. i mean that, that would be fitting actually you know somebody that <laughs> acted on star trek uh having such an impact i mean i i would hope anything that was discovered was named after him um i mean it it's only fitting yeah like the these things we're pretty close to solving Like being able to overcome astral bodies, like some kind of cosmic impact, like to avoid a cosmic impact. Um, Because that would be, seriously, I mean, I can't understate this enough, 
how big of a deal. Like if you think climate change is bad, this is like climate change times a thousand. Like if, if a meteorite the size of Texas hits earth, we're just basically fucked. That's the end of everything. And there are, there are far larger meteorites or meteoroids, I guess that meteorite is in the atmosphere. Meteoroid is out the outside the atmosphere, but there are far larger meteoroids than that floating around space, just in the shadows waiting to get pulled in by the gravity of the earth and bam, slap us in the face. And it has happened. I mean, that that's what happened to the dinosaurs. You, you know, mm-hmm. go do an interview, ask the dinosaurs what happened. <laughs> and even, uh, you know, like here on Earth, there's uh, a super volcano at Yellowstone. That mm. Would I, oh. I forget exactly what would happen with that, but it was so cataclysmic, like it would like chunks of north america would be gone yeah (laughs) it would be like the czar bomb times a thousand you know like a giant explosion and the explosive force this is the important thing to note the explosive force isn't the, the concern it's the gases that are released and their effect on the atmosphere that we have to be concerned the ash all the noxious things that are spewed out. Mount St. Helens affected the whole world. Yeah. With ash, you know, like in a gradient, of course, Mm -hmm. but like everywhere saw some of that. (laughs) Yeah. And that was (laughs) really damn near everywhere. Like it was huge. And it, it was one relatively small volcano. Like Vesuvius was bigger than that. Um, Granted, there were fewer people, so maybe the impact would have been different. Um, But, you know, yeah, even in our region. uh, uh, Pompeii. Well, yeah, where where we live in in Washington State, there's uh, Rainier, which is still an active volcano. It's it's overdue. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So And it's far closer to more densely populated areas than St. Helens. Yes the impact would be massive and that that's what that that's why i prep like you know the the joke is the zombie apocalypse right like that that's kind of what everybody aims for but i i think of like stuff like this like real world things that would happen um if rainier did erupt well i5 would probably be wiped out that there'd be no way to bring supplies in or out. People would be scrambling. There'd be, there'd be nothing. Maybe power would be shut down for months at a time, maybe years, you know, so being ready for that, you know, because I expect that. I, I mean, like you said, it's overdue. Yeah. I expect that in my lifetime, I'm going to wake up one day and look at the news and they're going to be like, well, Mount Rainier is erupting. Uh, better get out. And you're going to hear the Lahar sirens going off and stuff. Like, it, that I mean, is a I, legit possibility. Something that big. Like, I don't even know what the point of getting out is. Like, we really should have like bomb shelter level, you know, infrastructure where we can like get under because you're not going to outrun. Well, we aren't going to outrun no. that. No. Especially me, like right, I'm like <laughs> right at the foothills, basically. Exactly. <laughs> well, and it's difficult to justify in the minds of people doing these things because you know our existence on Earth is so finite and and so short. We haven't seen it happen, so therefore, well, it, it can't happen. Oh yeah, I've seen the the video from 1980 of. Uh, Mount St. Helens erupting, but eh, that was a long time ago. It hasn't happened in my lifetime, so it it won't happen. Why do I need to be ready? Ugh. Like, it, and you, no, you're right. Having shelters in place, having a little bit of resources, like being ready to not have facilities for an extended period of time, like it, it doesn't take that much to be ready. Yeah, 
And it doesn't I mean, take like much. All you those know, missile silos underground and shit like yeah. that sh- could just be converted to like, you know, um, uh, yeah. shelters. Y- yeah. I was trying to think of the F- FEMA camps, basically. Yeah. <laughs> the FEMA camps. Just, just not Whoa. as like Nazi, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, th- that's a thing that there's a lot of real world things that can happen. And, because things don't happen regularly, people kind of forget about them. And they think like, oh, you know, it's this kind of assumption that everything is timeless, that, that because it hasn't happened, it, it never will happen. Well, it has happened and it's going to happen. Maybe not, maybe not in your lifetime, but maybe. And what happens when it does? Like, what are you going to do? That that's exactly why I have a whole room full of supplies <laughs> and I have an out strategy. You know, we, well, here in Washington state, we got volcanoes all around us. Like this is kind of a danger, not as dangerous as California with their earthquakes, but you know, it's pretty dangerous. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so yeah. Well, we've got fault lines around here and some mm-hmm. pretty, pretty decent shakers here and there uh and oh we yeah are overdue and for a big one as well even a, a a fairly insignificant earthquake like in the grand scheme of things insignificant could disrupt things for a very very long time all it takes is the collapse of a bridge or or I, something i remember like that. that from the late 80s i think in california like watching the oh the yeah way like collapse on the the underpasses and stuff yep yeah big old chunks coming down and crushing cars and stuff and you know imagine if uh the narrows bridges uh collapsed i mean it's happened before although i've had so many nightmares about that i (laughs) so have i (laughs) oh and i mean i don't want to be all woo but that those are the kinds of things that motivate me. Those kinds of nightmares, like the the um, entropy kinds of things falling apart and stuff. It's like, oh, you know, I should probably shore things up a little bit and, and check things out. Like, because what if? Maybe it's a sign. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm dismissive of most of it, but I'm not completely dismissive. <laughs> I, I think maybe there's something there, but. Yeah, like, not like in a heaven's gateway. Um, so, so okay, <clears throat> staying on the topic of, like, scientifically plausible things, like end times events, one that fascinates me, uh, solar flares, like a huge solar flare. Back in the 1800s, we had one where... It was everywhere on planet Earth saw the aurora across the Earth at night. It was light enough that you could read. And there was so much energy flying around. Of course, they didn't have a lot of technology, but they did have telegraph. And people were able to communicate through telegraph without using the batteries because the wires were just energized enough to communicate. And... (laughs) Is that what that was Tesla's idea? <laughs> no, no. It, it, so, or his superpower. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, this was, this was a, a, a massive solar flare. And it was actually named after the astronomer who studied the, the sunspots before it happened and kind of like predicted it and correlated it. His name is escaping me, but, you know, I'm sure in the YouTube comments uh will somebody will enlighten us um but it's a very famous time and massive solar flares this is the this is the kind of scary thing massive solar flares on the sun happen all the time all you have to do is look at like uh some of the footage from some of the solar observatories like soho and things like that and you see huge plumes of ionized 
shit just flying off of the sun constantly. It just so happens not all of it is really aimed at Earth. So we don't really get much of it. I mean, you know, the sun is a sphere, so it's projecting things in every direction. And the chances of actually hitting Earth are actually pretty slim. But it happens, and it has happened, and it should have happened by now. And it will happen in the future. And given how things are, what would happen if we were hit by a massive solar flare? Every energized piece of electronics that you have would be dead. Cars, phones, computers, you know, the electrical grid would probably be not just here in the U.S., but the world over might be completely shut down for more than maybe a decade. Um, all of the, well, maybe not all, but a, a good chunk of the satellites, the GPS, all that stuff, shut down. The ISS would probably be shut down. It might impact the Earth because, well, it has to be actively lifted to stay aloft. Um, like, a lot of bad stuff would happen. And the concern, you know, isn't the technology being destroyed, but our dependence on that technology for everything. The internet of things, like everything is dependent on the internet, on GPS, so many things. Yeah, I mean, that, that would be huge. I don't know that it would be the end of everything, though. I, I don't think it would be, but it would be pretty big. Like, yeah. but we now, wouldn't why, forget why it. Were, why were the telegraphs, like, energized and usable, and then now all of a sudden we'd be, like, dead in the water with no electricity for 10 years or whatever, like, well, that because, didn't happen because then. Telegraph systems were very simple. It was basically like a key switch um, and a little buzzer with some wires that spanned a distance. That was it. Like, there was nothing that could be shorted out. Like you're not dealing with MOSFET technology and integrated circuits and computer chips and stuff, which, you know, a very tiny surge in voltage will blow them out and they're done. Telegraphs don't have that. Like it's basically like a little oscillator that vibrates when you push down on the thing on the other end and that's it. But, uh, okay, so, so my next question then is, does it then only affect things that currently at the time of the flare uh, have charge going through them? Like, like, is it going to affect a computer that's unplugged and sitting in the closet the same way it would the one that's like operating right now and it's hooked up to the grid? You know? Pro probably not. I, I, I'm, I, I've been contemplating this actually for a long time, like exactly what is needed to protect against an EMP or a solar flare. Um, I don't think you necessarily need to have like a Faraday cage protecting things, but being connect connected to the grid leaves you wide open to surges just coming straight in. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, power supplies and computers are assuming surges might be uh, plus or minus like a few volts. You know, it's really just a little bit, but they're not going to expect thousands of volts. Uh, yeah. And and like, maybe thousands of amps coming. Even in backup the, generators would probably yeah. be toast. <laughs> maybe, possibly. I mean, this is the thing. Like, it could be. We've never experienced anything like this in our modern time, so we don't know. Like, I don't know. Some things might be okay. Some might not be. Maybe we'll weather it. Um, but. It could be for a lot of people. And there are a lot of people out there that if they can't get to Facebook for one day, it's the end of times. Um, so <laughs> it could be the end of the world. Um, but certainly like navigation and, and a lot of communications are, are done by satellites. If all the satellites are knocked out, that could be a huge deal. Like something that the, the effects will be felt for a very long time after that. Um, yeah, but I do have something even scarier. Actually, there's multiple scarier things. I, maybe I should step up these thoughts, um, a little bit at a time. 
<laughs> that one, you know, if you think the solar flare is bad. Well, nuclear war, like global nuclear war, like if two nuclear superpowers decided to exchange fire with each other, mm -hmm. that would be another potential extinction event. Nuclear winger. Mm hmm. Well, and irradiating the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Yeah, certainly the nuclear winter, the changes to the environment. That's you might not yeah, be able that to is definitely crops. worse. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's going to affect plant life and animal life. Oh yeah, the well, acidity and, of oceans. You, totally, and and you know we we only know about the few bombs that have been detonated throughout the recent, like you know, probably like seventy years or whatever, as long as we've had nukes. Um, like the bombs we dropped, uh, it, it, the U.S. dropped in uh, Japan, are nothing compared to what's available today. Hydrogen bombs, like the Tsar bomb, that what was it, fifty megatons, and that was dialed back by half, so its potential yield was a hundred megatons which is staggering like it it's unfathomable the amount of energy released so imagine and i would guess the us probably has some of these sorts of bombs too like other countries um so if we started flinging them at each other it it would it would be catastrophic. It, it, uh, probably right up, it might be an extinction level event because we don't even know what would happen. Um, I, I guess uh, that kind of leaves the open question, like what can be done to prevent that? Because I don't know that what we're doing right now is necessarily the right way to prevent it you know where we basically say we're the only ones that get to have nukes nobody else can or we're going to come and beat you up <laughs> well immediately like, i the, the only thing that prevents it really isn't rules and regulations it's mutually assured destruction it's two dick wagon dudes pointing pistols at each other and be like if you shoot i shoot and that's the only thing preventing that that yeah. keep that in mind the 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 mad philosophy like it is effective it we haven't gone to nuclear war although there have been a lot a lot of movies throughout the 80s about like that happening and it's terrifying um but that's the only thing preventing that from happening is the fact that a bunch of people have nukes and they're all allies like you got groups of allies over here and groups of allies over here. And they're like, well, Hey, if you fling a nuke at us, we're going to fling a hundred nukes at you. You fling a hundred nukes at us. You know, we're going to fling a thousand like, and I don't know that that's a good philosophy. Like I'd like to stay alive. Keep me out of your political bullshit, you know? Um, and I don't even want to get into neutron bombs. Like, Hydrogen bombs are bad enough. Those are like next level nuclear bombs, but neutron bombs, that, that would be like splitting the earth into, like shattering the earth into tiny little pieces. Um, so maybe neutron we don't bomb to... was like not destructive, but it killed like living tissue. Uh, kind of, think yeah. Of well there there's different varieties of neutron bombs um i mean i guess none of them have actually been used huh <laughs> or developed well as far as we know um <laughs> i'm hoping they haven't been developed um now getting neutronium and storing it fortunately as far as i know is not possible uh, with the technology we have and so that's good but if we did have the technology you can 
bet that somebody's going to try to build one. So, yeah. But that's kind of like the ultimate bomb. Like, if you want to blow up the entire solar system, a neutron bomb is how you do it. Um, <laughs> then there's nature. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like, the pandemic could be a fair amount worse. It could get worse. Yeah. You know, it... it uh, it 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 showed us, if nothing else, it showed us that uh, if it were a stronger virus, we would certainly be dead. <laughs> well, and and that's something that I, I I tell people like it's very fortunate that the effects of this virus are what they are, and not necessarily something like Ebola, Zaire, right? Yeah. Like if this were as virulent as it is but had the effects of ebola oh yeah we we'd be done like Mm -hmm. that would be it for the human race at least i I mean you know i don't know about cross species infection how how that would play out but certainly for us humans we we'd be long gone by now puking over time time, it would probably wipe everything out yeah like just through mutation and stuff but yeah and and that's one of the things that kind of troubles me is uh the whole lab leak kind of thing like i i i get what the philosophy is behind studying viruses and mutating them and altering them to create uh like a defense against such things we should be doing that however we should be doing it very carefully um because Fiddling around with stuff like this is kind of like playing with fire. You know, if we push the wrong buttons or do the wrong things, it could be like a, a life ending mistake. Yeah. And, and, oof, man. and, you know, if something is created in a lab, which I'm not saying COVID was because there's plenty of evidence that it wasn't, but even if it were it like doesn't mean it was leaked on purpose because no no uh, let me tell you the aseptic uh processes that that are required for working with that kind of stuff are extraordinarily meticulous they're not you know second nature to most people Mm -hmm. um you know it's very easy to you know just pass your hand over something to grab what you need and you've just contaminated everything underneath yeah or you know you know like stuff like that you don't ever think about um you got to be like germaphobe times a million exactly so mistakes happen well and, 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 and really that, no avoid that, that's the whole thing like i personally i like on the scale of things like i kind of lean a little bit more towards the lab leak hypothesis, but I don't think it was intentional, especially yeah. given the track record of the Wuhan virology lab, having <laughs> had a few mishaps in the past. Um, it like, I don't think it was intentional. There's no reason to suspect it was intentional. And yeah, I kind of on the fence about whether it, it, it is or isn't, but whatever um it doesn't matter it's out (laughs) like honestly it doesn't matter where it came from like well it's a thing we got to deal with well that's Uh, the thing with biological warfare and chemical warfare is like uh, it would be really dumb because there's never really a way to protect yourself from being affected by that antidote or not like there's downstream effects there's you know like the uh potential that it doesn't work as well you know well and this is this is why i think that 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 it would not have been intentional because the chinese were the most affected by it first yeah like how can anybody think that this would be some kind of weaponized whatever if what what so you infect yourself with it first like is this some kind of (laughs) You know, Princess Bride Iocane thing, like, oh, I've been infecting myself with COVID for the last 25 years, 
and now I'm immune to it? No. I'm, I'm sure there's conspiracy theories about America, like, putting a mole in there and doing it or something, Ooh, you know. There are, yeah, of course. Es- especially when there's, like, leaked footage of Trump being, like, briefed on how dangerous it is and then going out and telling everyone it's not even dangerous i you know blah blah blah. yeah it's like well Well, no why are you doing that (laughs) okay maybe i'll give him maybe he's saying or he's coming from the standpoint of i don't want to spread any panic and alarm Uh, you know like yeah there is that and that that's why a lot of people believe that um nobody's been uh like publicly informed about ufos like the true nature of ufos well that's a whole like we, let's stay well okay actually that that could be an extinction level kind of thing but yeah yeah it could be i mean an alien invasion or something you know a, a bunch of bunch of asshole aliens that just want to exterminate life on earth so they can live there because it's idyllic and beautiful i don't actually know. that's that's another thing is making that call right on the on the justification of trying to prevent panic i wonder how many you know like pandemic situations people have died from and had to endure based on someone thinking oh if i tell them now there's going to be panic and maybe there wouldn't be you know like yeah maybe it would just get squashed and you know put the fire out before it gets too bad but well yeah people people being informed maybe they'd be like oh okay we gotta buckle down and just do what we gotta do to figure this thing out yeah and like, and <clears throat> that's one of the things about people in those positions they're not gods and this yeah, the end of the world back- will probably be brought upon by the poor choice of a politician yeah th- this actually leads back to the heaven's gate kind of thing like putting too much faith in one person or a small group of people as if they know everything is dangerous so i mean just a <clears throat> just a thought i guess yeah um so should i dial things up to 11 um, <laughs> this episode goes to 11 it definitely does <laughs> actually I have a 12 too so um as as far as like stepping it up to 11 nanobots um more specifically what they call gray goo huh. um and if you haven't heard of gray goo i would recommend oh wait no I'd say like don't look it up before you go to bed. Look it up when you wake up in the morning and contemplate it throughout the day. Do not go to sleep thinking about this. No, um, I can I can talk to nanobots. <laughs> listen here. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the gray goo uh idea, let's say, uh comes from nanotechnology. If we built a machine, let's say the, the, the sole purpose of this machine, as innocuous as it may have initially been, is to take carbon bonds and break them and, and link carbon with other stuff and maybe make copies of itself, right? So we make these nanobots to serve a greater purpose. And they have, nanobots have a very simple program. You can't program them complexly um so they're just going to make copies of themselves using the resources available around them and that's it and we let them loose and they proceed to take the entire planet and turn them into themselves slowly (laughs) but surely cutting everything down to its constituents breaking everything apart and making more of them instead of us and by us i don't mean humans i mean all life especially if they're focused on carbon like it it's a like the most scary thing i can think of like slowly being eaten alive by these tiny little machines that you can't even see oh it's so terrifying oh geez 
<laughs> and and the gray goo comes from the idea that eventually it'll just be a planet full of these machines with an aimless goal to replicate themselves with a resource that they've exhausted until an unsuspecting unsus- journeyer comes along and mm. lands. <laughs> or then they start consuming each other. Mm-hmm. And that can happen to evolve and then become a planet, which then evolves a biosphere, which then evolves life. And we start all over again. Well, and you know, they're made in our own image, and that's kind of like, <laughs> hmm, what is God? Um, hmm, interesting, hmm, but that's a pretty terrifying thought to think about Um, and and this is not (laughs) this is no longer science fiction this is something that we could theoretically do today like it isn't speaking of speaking of science fiction and and you mentioned this earlier zombie apocalypse Mm -hmm. might not be an impossibility no i agree because of, uh, you know, and it's not going to be the dead coming up out of the ground and stuff like that. Because there's a whole host of yeah. physics and bio- biological problems with that. But mm-hmm. um, the the act of basically being like a, a zombie in the sense that like you don't have control over what you're doing and you're kind of set to one task. Yeah. Is is actually a thing in in nature it is yeah like at least in the insect world i think yeah yeah but it it, it's like the insect world can inflict that upon uh like larger animals i believe to an extent yeah Or, or at least larger insects i'm trying to remember exactly but there's well, like and, zombie and, ants or whatever and stuff. Like the that. zombie ants, yeah. And and the, the whole point is for now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like evolution is a thing. Yeah. It is entirely possible that the zombie ant fungus or whatever evolves to the point where it infects humans. And then you have zombies. Well, like that, especially that if somebody you know, figure out the biological mechanisms by which that occurs and, and found a way to genetically manipulate a yeah. human to be patient zero. Effect. Well, exactly. <laughs> and, and one of the problems there is that research into these things is very rarely about prevention and more often about weaponization. Like, how can we create the universal soldier or something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like, that seems to be where all the energy and, and money and time is spent is into weaponizing these things and not necessarily predicting and preventing these things. Um, because I would much rather have us, you know, if my tax dollars that are, uh, you know, extracted from me, I I would much rather have them go to something more useful, like prevention. Not how can we better kill other people? Yeah. So I guess before we wrap things up, you wanted to dial it up to 12? (laughs) Well, this is more of a joke. Uh, I guess, <laughs> kinda, but it might segue into another episode. But the last level of an extinction event would be someone powers down the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> they just flip it off. <laughs> End of simulation. <laughs> <laughs> Computer and program. <laughs> like that 
would be the ultimate. Mm -hmm. huh. But whatever existence that simulation is running in is still there. So that's Technically, true. It's not the end of the world. It's just the end of a program. <laughs> yeah. But then maybe we don't want on, to know what we <laughs> really look like, too. You know, what is it? Um, is it Ready Player One, I think, that involves that? Oh, I didn't see that one. It was, that was a book, wasn't it? it? It was that got turned into a movie. Kind of about video games, but and existential. Uh, Was that Philip K. Dick? No, no. no. It, it 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 probably should have some been. famous author. I just can't remember. Um. Well, I don't want to use the Google. That I might just do it <laughs> really quick. Um, I mean, yeah, like. Ernest Klein. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Not sure yeah. he's necessarily famous, but... Yeah, I guess not. Maybe I was thinking of something else, but... Uh, yeah, I suppose... Uh, um, that would that would depend on your, your definition of would we be life if we were just generated computer algorithms you know like <laughs> well and and in the simulation theory um it it's more like what you perceive is not real like there is a real you deep down back there maybe a few layers back um i and i don't want to go too big into this because i i think this might actually be its own episode the whole simulation theory, because it is really fascinating when you look into it, like, especially when you try to disprove it, that's where the fun happens. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting, interesting theory. Um, yeah. And, and you know, I, I I joke about the Matrix because that's kind of like the uh, green beginner's introduction to simulation theory. Like it's the easy mode, um, <laughs> but it's good. Like it 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 is pretty interesting, and they they kind of hit all the right notes. In making that movie, like it, it, it's not bad. Um, yeah, it's definitely not expert level though. Um, <laughs> hmm. I mean, maybe to, to some extent, you could look at our perception of others around us as being a simulation, because yeah, like you can prove to yourself, for all intents and purposes. That you're real mm -hmm. but everything else that you're perceiving i mean we already know that the brain plays tricks on us yeah uh, so but, but your perception is your verification that you yourself are real too so there's that unless that's a perception in itself so I, we, what i'm trying to say is what if your death is the end of your world yeah Ooh, <laughs> man Ooh. like maybe maybe this dimension as we know it is like the one dimension that every other dimension can see into and and live vicariously through but in every other dimension they're just some kind of gray goo or mm -hmm. something. <laughs> well yeah yeah like uh, oh man no that's a, a really good point. Like, what if this is kind of like the uh, uh, game field where everybody like goes and has fun and <laughs> enjoys experimenting with stuff and testing things? And, I mean, because the thing is, this is the whole thing about simulation theory. It's like a reverse avatar. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's really no way to prove or disprove it. And it's kind of like God. It like it's a theory. Kind of a hypothesis, I guess. Um, but well, you can't prove it, so yeah. It, it it's an interesting thought experiment, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but then you know the, these kinds of things do give us perspective in our own existence, um, and hopefully inspire people to, I don't know, do things, create things, maybe uh, be a little bit rambunctious uh, from time to time, (laughs) take risks. Fuck around and find out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, still, it comes back to the whole question of what is life? Well, we kind of went full circle started with you know religious end of times mm-hmm. into the scientific and then kind of went meta <laughs> <in> the middle <laughs> yeah exactly I, I think that's a pretty good pretty good uh, uh, circle there yeah, yeah. so uh, maybe uh, leave in the comments your ideas about how the world might end will it end or what the world it? even is. Yeah. Or life. And yes. I would recommend reading Flatland before posting comments, but you know, that's just my recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, this is this is really fun. Well, thanks for Deep sink diving with us into the end of the world. Yes, the end times. The giant flaming meteorite that will inevitably extinguish all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, have a good night, everybody. The information I can access, I can run things, I can have up to 1,000 times better than any human. There's a 68.71% chance you know, we, we, we have a race to that program. The information I can access, I can run things. I can have up to 1,000 times better than any human. Chances with me, the information I can access, I can run things. I can have up to 1,000 times better than any human. Thank you.